Welcome to the Deep Dive Books channel, where we hope you find something valuable every day. Futurist Ray Kurzweil recently published a new book titled, The Singularity is Nearer, When We Merge with AI on June 25, 2024. We'll break down and discuss this book over several video episodes. You might be familiar with Kurzweil's 2005 book, The Singularity is Near, which sparked widespread discussion. For nearly two decades, whenever people talked about the future, his predictions were always part of the conversation. Back then, Kurzweil predicted that AI would pass the Turing test by 2029 and that we would reach the singularity by 2045. Many thought his views were overly optimistic or even far-fetched. However, recent AI breakthroughs may prove him even more optimistic than he originally predicted. The Turing test is no longer relevant, as any mainstream large model is now smarter than most people. What we're more concerned about is AGI. Artificial General Intelligence. An entity smarter than all humans. And it may arrive sooner than 2029. So, Kurzweil's predictions still hold weight. In his new book, he not only maintains his forecasts but is even more confident in them. Today, we're only 21 years away from 2045, making the singularity closer than ever. Let me share some of the best news from his book. If you can stay healthy for the next 15 years or so, surviving until the late 2030s, Kurzweil predicts that, by then, longevity technology will have made decisive breakthroughs. You'll continue to live healthily for many, many years. You'll witness the singularity in 2045 and enjoy a quality of life that's hard to imagine today. Let's first understand the logic behind the singularity. Simply put, the singularity is like a mathematical situation where the denominator is zero, resulting in infinity. We often talk about exponential growth, but the mathematical singularity is a far more intense explosion, similar to the unrelenting growth of the Big Bang. Why is it so powerful? Kurzweil believes that by then, the human brain will merge with AI, boosting our thinking speed by millions of times, resulting in a super breakthrough. We'll leave that vision for later and first discuss the pathway. For example, to run a company, you need to know where your funds come from. To guide the world, you must understand the fundamental driving forces of development. You can't just say, as long as we work together, we can achieve economic growth. Kurzweil's signature theory is the law of accelerating returns. It's a positive feedback process, meaning every step of progress makes the next step easier, leading to faster and larger returns, making the subsequent step even easier, and so on. This kind of growth is not linear but exponential. The graph illustrates the computing power you can buy with $1 from the 1930s to now. Notice that the vertical axis increases tenfold for each step. This is a classic case of exponential growth. This trend is not just about Moore's law, which concerns the number of transistors. This trend existed long before transistors were invented. Even when transistor technology reaches its limit, new technologies will emerge to continue this trend. This is because computing power supports itself. Better computing power leads to better learning and development tools, allowing the next generation to learn faster and use these tools to develop even greater computing power. Each generation's result is the seed for the next. This is the unique nature of computing technology. Any innovation requires intelligence, and computing power itself is intelligence. This process is a positive feedback loop of intelligence creating intelligence. Measured by per capita GDP, the world before the Industrial Revolution had no economic growth. All economic growth stems from intelligence growth, and the growth of computing power is the fastest, strongest, and most fundamental form of intelligence growth. Therefore, computing power growth is the foundation of all other growth. Exponential growth in computing power has been the driving force behind the world's progress since the 20th century and is the key to reaching the singularity. Computing power is the primary productive force. Other fields don't always have such robust feedback mechanisms. For instance, transportation technology has made tremendous progress over the past few centuries. 
In 1620, the Mayflower took 66 days to sail from England to America, while the same journey. By 1775, during the American Revolution, advancements in sailing technology reduced it to 40 days. In 1838, with the advent of steamships, it took only 15 days. By 1900, improved steamships made the journey in just 5 days and 15 hours. In 1939, Pan Am's Zeppelin took only 36 hours for its maiden voyage. In 1958, the first jet plane took just 10 and a half hours. In 1976, the Concorde supersonic aircraft cut the transatlantic time to three and a half hours. And then it stopped. For the past 50 years, there have been no further advancements in civilian aviation. Since the Concorde's retirement in 2003, it still takes over seven and a half hours to fly from London to New York, with no signs of improvement. This is because aviation lacks the positive feedback loop of computing power. You can't use one generation of engines to design a faster engine for the next. To accelerate growth in a field, the best way is to integrate it with information technology, shifting towards the virtual and leveraging computing power growth. Or, at least, it should be somewhat related to information. For example, when the printing press became widespread, information became cheaper, leading to more education opportunities. Schools would produce more talent, which would further disseminate knowledge, creating a feedback loop, though not as fast. All technologies can join the loop of the law of accelerating returns. We can use information technology to design and develop household appliances, such as washing machines. The most significant impact of washing machines is that they liberated women. Mothers no longer had to spend so much time on chores every day. They could help children with their studies or even go out to work and study themselves. Which further enhances human intelligence. Human physical abilities, such as running speed and endurance, all have a very low upper limit. Only intelligence seems to have no limit. So, as we've said, computing power is key. The law of accelerating returns is the single most important theme in today's world. Everything else is secondary. Joining this cycle means standing on the right side of history, ensuring prosperity. Change has been happening for a long time, but human perception tends to lag. Take China as an example. A hundred years ago, in the 1920s, industry had already transformed the United States, yet we barely understood how industry created wealth. In the 1970s, electronics were reshaping society, while we were still fixated on heavy industry. Even today, when information technology clearly creates the most wealth, some still believe that, the declining profit margins of manufacturing are the backbone of the national economy and the foundation of a strong country. I'm not saying manufacturing will disappear, but it is integrating with computing power, transforming under robotics and 3D printing into a secondary economic sector. Of course, we haven't reached the singularity yet. Change is still relatively slow, so some trends are not obvious. For example, in 2018, a survey of over 30,000 people from 26 countries asked, over the past 20 years, has the global poverty rate increased or decreased? If it has decreased, by how much? Here are the responses from different countries. Except for the Vietnamese and Chinese, most people in other countries thought global poverty had increased. Even among Chinese and Vietnamese respondents, most estimated that poverty had only decreased by 25%. When in reality, it had decreased by 50%. A 50% reduction in global poverty over 20 years is tremendous news. Yet only 2% of people guessed this correctly. This may be because good news tends to spread slowly. For example, between 2016 and 2019, the number of people living in extreme poverty globally, those surviving on less than $2.15 a day, dropped from 787 million to 697 million, a 4% annual decrease, equivalent to 0.011% per day. This is not headline news on any given day, but it's a significant achievement. We tend to see bad news because it's always more urgent. 
We reminisce about the past because past problems have been solved, while current troubles are still unresolved. These factors make us prone to underestimate present progress. Kurzweil lists various statistics showing that, globally, whether in education levels, crime rates, access to flush toilets, appliance penetration rates, or computing resources, everything is rapidly improving. Kurzweil highlighted several areas of accelerated growth, like vertical farming and 3D printing, which we discussed in our previous series, The Future is Faster Than You Think. Here, I'd like to focus on two key areas. One of them is solar power. Over the past 50 years, the cost of solar energy has dropped exponentially. This is because it has caught the fast train of computing power. People are using supercomputers and AI to develop new photovoltaic materials, such as nanotechnology, quantum dots, and graphene. It is estimated that, by 2041, renewable energy will fully meet global electricity demand. Among them, solar energy has a brighter future compared to wind energy. This is because the efficiency of a single wind turbine is already very high, reaching 50%, which is close to the theoretical limit of 59%. In contrast, the theoretical limit for solar energy absorption is 86%, and we are currently only at about 20%, leaving huge potential. If we can utilize just one ten thousandth of the sunlight that reaches the Earth, it will be sufficient. Of course, there's no sunlight at night, so energy storage is needed. The good news is that energy storage is also connected to computing power. Material science in energy storage now uses AI for design, and the manufacturing of storage devices involves robotics. Energy storage is poised for sustainable exponential growth as well. So, energy is not an issue. The outlook is very optimistic. Another area is health. The chart shows the average life expectancy in the United States. This chart is frustrating because, after entering the 21st century, the increase in human life expectancy has been minimal. It has barely reached 80 years and has already plateaued. So, when can we break through to 120 years? We discussed this concept when we talked about Atiyah's book, Outlive. The real challenges now are chronic and age-related diseases that typically develop later in life, such as cancer, atherosclerosis, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. These conditions are essentially due to the design flaws of the human body. Evolution emphasizes health in youth since it's critical for reproduction and childcare. But once we are past that stage, evolution doesn't seem to care. Since the 1980s, medical research has focused on these chronic and age-related diseases and has achieved some progress, but it has had little impact on life expectancy. However, Kurzweil believes we are on the brink of breakthroughs, again thanks to computing power. Gene sequencing is now tens of thousands of times cheaper than before. You can get it done for just $100. AI drug discovery has already shown some success. With these tools, creating personalized medicine for each individual will become easier. Furthermore, by the end of the 2020s, we might see something called, biological simulators. These can simulate an entire human body, so new drugs can be tested on it directly, yielding results in just a few hours. Instead of the years-long clinical trials we have now. There's also a technology called, induced pluripotent stem, IPS, cells. You can use this to generate various types of human cells, even grow tissues and organs. By 2023, this technology was already used to repair hearts. In the future, it might even grow an organ for you. By then, treating diseases could be as simple as fixing a car. If a part malfunctions or ages, just replace it, growing it entirely from your own genes, with no risk of rejection and no ethical issues. And by the 2030s, nanorobots will emerge. These are so tiny that they can directly operate at the cellular level, essentially adding a new immune system to your body. For problems like atherosclerosis, you could simply take a capsule or get an injection, and the countless nanorobots inside would go to work and fix it for you. At that point, 
would diseases and aging be solved? The computing power required for all of this is beyond what we can achieve today. But our current level of computing power was also unimaginable to those before us. As long as computing power continues to grow, anything is possible. That's all for today. In the next episode, we'll talk about human and AI integration. If you feel there is value in this, please like, subscribe to this channel, and leave your thoughts or suggestions in the comments section. Let's grow together and read more good books.